Storytelling in the digital age can be a live performance. Right now, I'm telling a story. My words can go out there and live beyond me and be absorbed by the audience and become part of their experience. A musician hears the audience as they respond to their music. They hear the roars. They see the lighters held aloft. They hear the chants for some song that they want to hear. Writing in a collaborative way with fan fiction and also with serialized fiction provides you that feedback. I think in the beginning, telling each other stories was about survival. It was about sharing our knowledge. This is the most incredible thing that humans can do that almost no other creature can do. I mean, bees can do a little dance to point towards the food source. Birds can give warning, predator calls. What we can do is take something in our mind, in our imagination, and plant our vision into someone else's brain. We love storytelling so much that when we go to sleep, we don't stop doing it. We dream in story. We have this incredible desire to create stories as individuals, and an even stronger desire to absorb them. Writing is such a solitary endeavor. And when I can pop up and have some interaction with my uh, audience, my readers, my fans, this energizes me. Hey, everybody. <clears throat> Thanks for coming out. It's our little campfire here. OK, how many writers are here? I want to talk tonight about storytelling and how it's a community event and how it started just like this. Fan fiction is as old as storytelling. You know, the first story would have been borrowed and elaborated on. When the audience becomes the next storyteller, when they engage with the story so much that they want to add their own twist to it, then you've done something right as a storyteller. If we look at great works like The Odyssey and The Iliad, which we attribute to Homer, really these stories were told by hundreds of people. Dozens of storytellers would have passed this on and made it their own. Examples like Dickens, who was writing serialized fiction that came out of newspapers, and he was getting feedback from the audience and catering his story to that feedback. Baum, who went back to The Wizard of Oz and wrote eight more books after having said he was not going to write any more. The fan reaction pulled more out of him. And this has been my process. My best-selling novel started as a short story. The response to it was so great that people wanted more in this world. Instrumental in my entire writing process has been reader reviews. I was able to log on to Amazon. I could read the reviews and see how the story was doing in the reader's mind. I could even leave comments and have uh, a dialogue with people about my story. The culmination of interacting with the readers has been to see some of my readers go on to become full-time writers or editors. Jasper Schurz, this Dutch artist, sent me some fan fiction in his medium and I asked Jasper if I could you know, use this for cover art and went on to commission several more works from him. He had a system that he let happen on Amazon that Amazon said, wow, this works, and they've created a multi-million dollar business model based on something he was just doing. I really owe my career to Hugh. And when I heard that he was letting fans write some short stories, I did that based on one of the characters that he created in Wool. And he gave me permission to sell it. Well, he's like the father of modern fan fiction. I mean, there's no doubt about it. I think a lot of self-publishing authors have way more success now because of him. With his success, a lot of us are inspired by it and, and, and basically try to do the same thing. I think we live in absolutely the golden age for literature. Like, first, understand that to me, self-publishing is the democratization of literature. Like, when we hear that word, we should think of, like, indie filmmaking and indie music scene. I find it fascinating, but also disappointing, is that when we talk about this industry, we talk about bookstores and publishers and how they're doing, and honestly, no one should care how they're doing. We should be talking about, do authors have the tools to reach readers? Do they have the ability to make a living doing what they do? Are the doors open for a wide variety of voices? I see us returning to a world of campfires and stories and sharing, and I think that these stories will not be stamped by a press, but bear the stamp of who we are. And this is a world I'm excited to explore.